David Brucey here with another Three for All, and this is three Mark Tremonti licks from 2008. And Mark Tremonti, of course, is famous for playing with the band's Creed and Alter Bridge and his own group, Tremonti. And he was named uh, Guitarist of the Decade by Guitar World Magazine last year. And he definitely has a lot of respect, a lot of fans and followers. And he's influenced, you know, an entirely new generation of guitarists, you know, since the early 2000s. And it's really interesting. And also, it's, it's also noteworthy that the time when Creed and Alter Bridge kind of hit the scene, shred guitar and guitar solos wasn't really cool at that time. You know, the late 90s, early 2000s, people were still kind of scared to play guitar solos. And I remember at that time I heard groups like Avenged Sevenfold and Atreyu, and they had solos and tapping and stuff. And then all of a sudden I heard Tremonti, and he started boosting, you know, his playing, and I heard more soloing, and I heard more licks and stuff, and I thought, what's happening, you know? And it was kind of that resurgence of shred guitar in the early 2000s. I remember back at that time reading guitar magazines and interviews with Mark Tremonti, and around the time of that first uh, Alter Bridge album, you know, he was taking guitar lessons. He was studying with Troy Stetna, you know, he was studying with Michelangelo Badio. I think he also was studying with Rusty Cooley. He mentioned, you know, Paul Gilbert's Intense Rock and uh, John Petrucci's Rock Discipline and these instructional videos and books that are very important. And I found that really interesting because, you know, I mean, at the time he was already a rock star. You know, he'd already kind of charted and hit the scene with Creed and they were huge. And then by the time he shifted gears and, and started, you know, Alter Bridge, he didn't have to do that. I mean, he could have just, you know, been lazy and rich or whatever and just kind of not worried about it. But you could tell he was very focused. He wanted to push himself and get better. And I thought that was really interesting and inspiring where I thought, man, he's hungry. He's, he's wanting to go further, you know, like a racehorse or something. But that desire to improve and to learn you know, that reminds me of other famous guitarists. You know, think of Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes was touring the world with Ozzy Osbourne, but he was still taking classical guitar lessons and he was seeking out instructors everywhere they went. And he would go to universities and colleges and study and take a, you know, guitar lesson from various classical instructors. That's really cool. You know, Satriani, of course, famously teaching people like Steve Vai and Kirk Hammett, you know, Alex Skolnick and the gang. And that educational side, you know, I've always kind of noticed that. Uh, Paul Gilbert and Bruce Bouillet, you know, back in the GIT days, um, and then eventually Bruce joined Racer X. That's really interesting. And then in this video, you know, Mark is literally taking a backstage lesson from Rusty Cooley. So this lesson and the footage and everything that we're going to look at is really different than the normal three-for-all, you know, format. I did find some live, you know, solos from Mark. But when I found this kind of candid backstage footage with, you know, Mark Tremonti, Rusty Cooley, and this pack of just random people, it was really interesting because they were talking about, you know, what they'd worked on that day or what he'd learned that day. So they just had a guitar lesson, you know, right before the footage was shot. And then Rusty's talking about some of the things they learned. And then Mark starts asking questions and Rusty starts shredding and stuff. But when I found that footage, I was like, I'm going to use this because it's on the basis of a guitar lesson that Mark took from Rusty. Here's a clip from this footage, and it's just a clip of Rusty just shredding. I mean, like a flamethrower, you know, he is just relentless. And you hear the people in the room, they start laughing because it's just, you know, insanity on the fretboard. And then Mark even had a little candid comment at the end, which I added that to. Stick with me, I'm easier to learn. <laughs> the first lick from this footage is a diminished 7 arpeggio in the key of D, and you literally hear Mark and Rusty talking about the lesson they just did. And Rusty says, you know, we worked on, you know, diminished 7 arpeggios. And he plays this. <laughs> which is just a sequenced, you know, diminished 7 arpeggio. And you could descend with that idea too. It's a 
five note, you know, sequence, which is really cool. <laughs> There's one, two, three, four, five, and then right there, grab that D note again and go up five more notes. And I like that sequence, you know, it's five, you know, groupings of five, so it has that real, just different kind of feel and flow to it. <laughs> You could actually extend that all over the fretboard. You could do something like this. You can go all the way up to the you know the high D way up there. But that's an interesting you know sequence, and I love you know diminished ideas just simply because you've got the flat five you know kind of hiding in there, and it's got a really dark sinister flavor. But one more time here. And here's the footage from this, you know, backstage kind of candid lesson. And check out Rusty just shredding that, you know, at the speed of light. We did some diminished seventh stuff. <laughs> So during this backstage footage, Mark literally asked Rusty for an arpeggio with a six string root, and Rusty plays this. And it's technically E flat minor. And I'm not sure if Rusty was tuned down a half step, which that would have put his fingers, you know, around E minor, but the pitch of what he played was technically E flat minor in that two octave shape right there. <laughs> And then eventually he shifts up to the next position of E flat minor and comes down a different arpeggio. So he goes up this way, shifts, and then comes down like this. And then I just started kind of weaving those two back and forth like this. pick through that like Steve Morris or you can sweep it you know it's up to you but the important thing is just kind of gaining that shift and control over moving between and drifting between those two different positions and I love stuff like that where you're literally you know going up in one position and down in another position and you can do that with arpeggios and scales and all kinds of stuff but uh, one more time here kind of slow <laughs> faster the next idea is this F sharp major 9 F sharp major 7 idea that Rusty played and the footage actually revealed Mark you know sitting there trying to learn it and play it and they were both talking about it and kind of you know going back and forth and it felt very much like a guitar lesson, you know, literally. Even though this was technically the post-lesson footage, because they'd already had their guitar lesson, but Mark was literally like begging for more, like, show me this, you know, what's that? But uh, something like this. <laughs> So it starts with this F, uh, F sharp major 9. Because there's your root, your major 3rd, your 5th, your major 7, and then the ninth right there, that G sharp. And then he changes it and he reaches up and grabs that A sharp. ideas like that you know where it's busy and it's based around an arpeggio but it's also melodic and you hear that little bit of legato kind of creeping in there too um, so one more time here kind of slow <laughs> footage Rusty actually expands that and he's just flying through whatever he played which I didn't take the time to learn his expanded version because it was pretty terrifying I just wanted to show the basic idea and then you can take that ball and run with it like Rusty did because uh, well you'll see when the footage plays it's, it's terrifying <laughs> Yeah. 
Here's a bonus lick, but this didn't come from the footage with Rusty and Mark, you know, doing the backstage lesson. This was a different video with Mark Tremonti, and he was warming up before a gig, and he plays this wicked, you know, E7, like, slip and slide idea. Something like this. <laughs> And it's really cool because he's going up, you know, basically E major right here. Then he shifts into the next position and grabs a higher, you know, a higher fingering of E major. So it's kind of that little D major shape, but it's an E right there. That kind of thing. And then right there, when you grab that B, you're going to shift back to G and then slide into G sharp, like this. And then come down and grab that E and the B on the D and the G, uh, A string. And then you're going to grab this A note and sl shift slide it, you know, back and forth into the flat five. Come back to that G and then grab G sharp. Something like that. So really slowly all the way through. And he just ends with that big E power chord down here. Let me try that again, that was a little sloppy. That's going to wrap this look at three Mark Tremonti licks from 2008, and hopefully nobody's unhappy or upset that I kind of focused on the lesson that Rusty and Mark were having, you know, back in 2008, instead of just focusing on Mark Tremonti, which uh, I do plan on doing some more, you know, uh, centered around Mark Tremonti. We're definitely going to have a chord play coming at some point, because Mark's chords and his, you know, progressions and ideas are really interesting and musical, too. But uh, when I found the footage, I was like, no, this is cool, because I remember reading about Mark, you know, boosting his technique and his chops. And that's right around the time when that video was shot, you know, maybe a few years after that initial boost, you know, when he uh, formed Alter Bridge. But I always thought that was so, you know, special. I thought, no, he's, he's trying to improve. He's pushing himself. And especially when it's a rock star, that's really rare, because usually stars don't want to you know, admit their weaknesses or show their fans that there's something they can't do or whatever. And it's like, no, he was like humble and respectful and hungry for that knowledge and more, you know, ability and more, you know, more technique, basically. So that's inspiring. That's what, you know, a big part of this channel is about. That's a big part of me. That's a big part of probably you too is, you know, striving for greatness and trying to improve your musicianship and your playing and your technique and your knowledge. And that's what Mark was doing, you know, way back when, uh, when this footage was shot. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.